everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you to today's session of TAP Talks. TAP India is the art platform, which is a collective platform that brings together leading galleries from across the country and facilitates a unified art market through collaborations and interesting conversations. I'd like to thank Sharan Appara and Anupa Mehta for conceptualizing TAP Talks. Please feel free to send in your questions to the Zoom chat uh, box below, and we'll address those at the end of the conversation or later on TAP's social media feed. Today's talk, uh, sorry, before that, I hope I'm audible. Today's talk is focused on private art museums in India. Museums as collections of curios stemmed from the 16th century Kunstkammer, Cabinet of Curiosities, a museum is an entity that collects and preserves art, but more importantly, it's a place for engagement with art and self-reflection and also an agent for social progress. The number of private art museums across the globe has risen dramatically over the past two decades with more private than public museum spaces existing today. There are more than 300 private contemporary art museums worldwide of which the greatest concentration is in the United States, Germany, and more closely, <clears throat> China and South Korea. Over 70% of the world's existing private art museums were founded in the last 15 years. The rise of private art museums globally has led, led to dramatic changes in the cultural language of art and a phenomenal increase in art audience awareness. Now this raises questions about the changing roles of private art museums in society. There is a shift away from Western cultural narratives and towards decolonized local art practices. The societal impact of the art museum is expanding as it experiments with new approaches, new interdisciplinary approaches, curation, inclusive audience engagement, and technology, of course, technology. The museum of today is ever evolving. In India, private museums specific to modern and contemporary art is a very recent phenomenon. The Kiran Nadar Museum of Art in New Delhi can be seen as a pioneering private museum initiative now in its 11th year. A remarkable effort, you would all agree, by two extraordinary women, one an avid art collector who dreamed about a place where her collection could be housed and made public. And the other, an educator, curator, and the director of KNMA, who has worked relentlessly to build a team and materialize the dream of a contemporary art museum in India. Before diving into the conversation, I'd like to offer a brief introduction of our passionate and esteemed guests here with us tonight. We're very happy to have Kiran Nadar with us. Kiran Nadar is a founder and chairperson at Kiran Nadar Museum of Art, established in 2010, and a trustee at the Shiv Nadar Foundation. Her passion for art and philanthropic vision have led KNMA to be inclusive, welcoming, and community focused. Within a decade, KNMA has profoundly shaped the country's art landscape. An avid collector, Kiran has forged collaborations with globally renowned museums, including the Reina Sofia Museum in Madrid, the Musée de Guinée in Paris, the Metropolitan Museum in New York, and the Tate Modern in London, amongst others. She was a driving force behind the India Pavilion at the Venice Biennale in 2019. Kiran has been consistently recognized for her contributions to art and philanthropy. Uh, she was voted one of the 100 most influential people in the contemporary art world by the UK-based Art Review. She has a far-reaching vision, a big heart, and a discerning eye for art. Now, a fun fact about Kiran, if I may, is that she is amongst the top bridge players in India, having participated in international bridge competitions. We are also very happy to have Rubina with us. Rubina Karode is the director and chief curator at the Kiran Nadar Museum of Art a Fulbright scholar and with 
postgraduate specializations in uh, art history and in education. Uh, she taught both Indian modern and Western art history for over 15 years at various institutions. Rubina has curated numerous exhibitions, both within India and abroad. Uh, she's focused on the art of the underrepresented and intergenerational artists, whose contribution has been crucial in the discourse of modern and contemporary Indian art. She's also focused on um, the work of women artists in India. Um, she was a curator of the Indian Pavilion at the 58th Venice Biennale in uh, 2019. With her rigorous program at KNMA, Rubina focused on collaborations and partnering with significant institutions to consolidate the global presence and relevance of contemporary Indian and Southeast Asian art. I've known Rubina personally as a curator, writer, and dear friend for the last many years and worked on several projects with her. And I appreciate the sensitivity and depth that she brought to every curatorial project with us. She's a wonderful and fine person. And I admire her equanimity and calm in all her work. Her essays for Anantar publications are still cited as important sources of reference. I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to our passionate and distinguished guests here with us tonight, Kiran Nadar and Rubina Karode. My first question is for Kiran. Um, so Kiran, uh, KNME was the first modern and contemporary art museum in India. Could you tell us about your motivations and inspirations that went into creating KNMA and your vision to share your collection with the public? Uh, it started with, uh, uh, you know, I had built uh, not such a large collection at that stage, but a lot of my collection was in storage. I had um, put up works at my house, at my husband's office, and yet, works were going into storage. And I started to think that it really wasn't meaningful to have a collection that should go into storage. I should do something more meaningful with it. And I did discuss it with uh, a few people who I was close to in the art world. So I decided that I would start a museum and put my collection out to share it with people. And I never, I don't know if I envisaged building something gigantic at that stage or, or that I had the vision that I was going to really build uh, such a large KNME. But um, I, uh, we started in 2010. I think the thought started maybe three or four years earlier. And at that stage, the collection wasn't that large. It, I think it's grown after the initial uh, starting of the Museum of Noida. And uh, it's grown quite exponentially. And I think so has my desire to collect. And so that's how it's all happened. Uh, yeah, today we are in this, on the verge of building uh, a standalone building. Of course, I'll tell you about that as we go along. Thank you, Kiran. Well, that's for all of us. Um, Rubina, how, would you add and uh, define the vision of KNMA? Yeah, we can put the first slide on, perhaps. Yeah. Shruti? Um. Firstly, thank you, Mamta and TAP India and its dynamic team for having us uh, for, for this conversation. It's lovely to be with you all. And um, I think uh, what Kiran said is absolutely right. When I uh, met her and joined her in 2009, um, there was no museum actually in mind, in, in the sense it wasn't there, but uh, she had a dream and she expressed how she was concerned that she was collecting art, but it was scattered in different places and she herself did not get to enjoy it or engage with it as they were in storage. And so this whole idea that this must come together and must be shared with the larger public started with us. It started as a small dream. I would put it that way. And uh, it was inaugurated in Noida. As you can see, this is the Noida space where the first exhibition took place, opened doors, where Kenem literally opened its doors 
uh, to the larger public in 2010. And I think the vision was, and I think um, most important, what Kiran expressed to me was that there, is, there are so many signs of urban development and um, you know, the city really growing, but uh, there is a dearth of cultural spaces. So artists, art and cultural spaces are really rather invisible or less or few. And so the idea that there must be visibility and accessibility to art and people must enjoy it, and connect with it was really the driving force. But I think the vision has uh, grown and since, uh, uh, since the team has come together that uh, it, most importantly, it must become a space for sharing, for conversations and for confluence. You know, museums, contemporary museums especially, are not really um, just repositories of objects. Yes, objects are an important part. They are not also only sites of display, but they are where people gather. The, these are the spaces for gathering, for confluence, for connecting, for sharing, and for really community building, so to say. And that really wasn't an easy task, even though the vision was spelled out, I would say. Thank you, Rubina. Um, so while we're on the uh, collection, uh, uh, Kiran's and uh, Kian and his collection, um, Kiran, could you please tell us how you began collecting art? Um, which works did you start with as a collector? Yeah, we, I, we you know, I, I have talked about this in the past, Next. so a few people may know, but the first work I collected is the one that is um, other well, the two works which are now on the screen. Uh, the first was Ramishwar Bhuta's The Runners. Mm, and in a way, I'm still running, still running after art and collecting. <laughs> but Runners was the first work. And uh, it's uh, for somebody who was not an oriented collector, I didn't, hadn't really, you know, uh, collected so much. It was a very daring work to, to choose. But I just loved it. And um, so, and it's still actually in my home. It's, it's in my husband's study. And the second work is Manjeet. This, I, yeah. in my opinion, That's is the best Manjeet. I really do. I think he had done a series uh, in the Illustrated Weekly. There was a magazine called Illustrated Weekly. I don't know how many of you have seen it. They were black and white drawings. And I love those works. So when I met him, I said, can't you do something which is uh, inspired from those drawings? Mm -hmm. And he said, yes. And this is what he did. It was a commission work. And this is what he did. And I think it has all his uh, figures, which have then become part of his oeuvre, which is, you know, mm -hmm. all of them, whether it's the bear or the cow or the, or the, or the animals or the I mean, everything is there. So, yeah, yeah and, the, and sort of bright canvases and, and yeah. it's very special. Yeah, so Kiran, has there been a shift in your tastes and preferences in your four decades of collecting art? Um, you know, um, next please. Well, okay, this wasn't collected, but I had also collected, I had also commissioned um, Hussain to do a work and he did two works and we collected both. But this is a later work that I acquired, Yatra, and it, it is uh, one of his, I think one of his most important works. Even though it's not such a large work, but it really epitomizes um, how he was able to touch on the common, common people of India. And it so strongly embodies Hussain. So, yeah, you asked me if I was there was a change in my um, way of collecting. Uh, I don't know if there's a change. I was always quite, uh, I always collected quite vastly. I mean, I, I wasn't sort of limited to one artist, although I had a great fascination for the Bombay Progressive. And, um, and I think I collected the Progressives the most. And I think it still exists. I mean, if I see a really good progressive work, even today, I'm drawn to it. So it's not as if that's changed. 
fundamentally. But I think today the museum has uh, probably the best progressive collection. It, it really, we have got a collection from 1940 to 1980. I think it is a really important collection. Uh, be it Souza, Raza, Hussain. We can see those images. Yeah. Can you forward the images? Yeah. yeah. So this is the guy today. Um, yeah. Of course, this is Raza. Next. Uh, and this is a wonderful painting of Tushan Khanna. Uh, yesterday, Rubina had a, had a talk with Tushan. It was his 96th birthday. And really, I think Tushan as an artist uh, hasn't quite got the due that he deserves. I think he is wonderful. And even today at 96, he's so lucid and he's so committed to art. He's really wonderful. Anyway, this can, is I, a, yeah. can I, can I, Mamta, add something? I just want to tell you my little experience when I first uh, was called by Kiran and uh, to uh, work on the inventory of uh, the works that they're already in her collection. I saw these Bombay progressive works and my jaw was dropping. And literally, I mean, I had read about them as a student. I had not seen those works. And I now was actually seeing them really in front of me, whether it was Tayyab's Man and the Horse or uh, Hussein's many, many works or Raza's many works, uh, Akbar Padamsi, Ram Kumar's Vagabond, uh, you name it, they were. And I think that uh, what Kiran says is right, that that fascination she continues to have, she tells me it is something that she identifies with that time maybe, you know, and also the fact that, um, it really then has become a substantial in-depth collection of uh, the progressives that one has. But I think with her making a shift from, you know, in personal collecting to uh, institution building, mm -hmm. I think that has then um, expanded the canvas for her, you know? So that expanse has happened. She has never been, uh, she's never drawn boundaries, I would say, when it comes to collecting. So in that sense, sometimes when we, when we have our internal meetings and brainstormings, we say, so what is it? How long is the span of this collecting? Is it 100 years? It's going to be 150 years because if we, if we go backward, we can go to Ravi Varma in the 1890s and 1880s. We go forward, it's just an open-ended space and we continue to stretch it. And I remember one of my exhibitions, I titled Stretch Terrain. You know, it's come, some kind of a stretch terrain, which really accommodates uh, many of these um, landmarks and you know important um, you know seminal times and seminal uh, works in the collection. So it's a wide spread of works, and uh, the timeline is is uh, I mean is, is long. So that's great. And um, uh, yeah. can I have another question? Sorry, Rubina, you want to say? Something? No, I just want to say that uh, moving from the progressives, it's not that I stopped there. Uh, yeah. Sort of the contempt, the the sort of contemporary uh, progressive contemporaries like Arpita. Um, Arpita is an artist that I have also collected in depth. Uh, Nalini, and then of course, of course Nasreen, who we had uh, our first major foray into. Uh, it was an exhibition at Rana Sophia and then the Met. Um, then Nilima, and of course, Himmat and Jairam. Uh, the, the, there's a myriad of different things about these artists, but mm -hmm. I have collected all of them. And, uh, and I think uh, we have made a great effort to inculcate all the various schools of art into the museum. Yeah, uh, Shruti, can you move and let's look at some more images? Yeah. Next. Okay, this is a, an Amrita Shergil. Uh, it's a self-portrait of her at, at Harizo. And it's a very poignant uh, painting because it shows her vulnerability, which sometimes we don't see. You know, 
So, next. Hey, well, I think one of the things, uh, Kiran, um, you would agree that uh, we really, um, uh, we really spend a lot of time uh, looking at women artists' works. Yes, we do. We have given a lot of space to women artists. Yes. In and we've had a number of shows which have had um, only women artists. Yes. So, uh, yeah. I mean, even the last show that we did, uh, Zarina's, uh, sort of rep uh, uh, which is mainly based on Zarina, but we had five, four other women artists who were part of the, five other women artists who were part yeah. of the scene. Seven of them, yes. Seven, seven so six more, yeah. And uh, so... Yes, and actually it's amazing. India has some really, really great women artists. I mean, look at this work of Sheila's. It is, I don't know how many uh, exhibitions we've loaned this work on. You know, it's a difficult work to go and it travels, but it, it is constantly being uh, asked for. Even and his work on the left. When I did Nalini's retrospective, I mean, she is such an acclaimed, internationally renowned artist. She has had huge solo exhibitions abroad, you know, and I realized that this was uh, her first retrospective in India. And um, it was amazing. Some of these artists have really, I mean, they have such experiential and artistic wisdom. And I think collaborating with them during the while curating the exhibitions was such a learning, tremendous learning experience, you know, that uh, one gathers through this. So curation really helps. It's a great form of learning also and sharing and connecting with artists and how they think and how their visions are, which is so important uh, for a museum and its uh, educational program as such. Um, should we move to the next one? Or? Any more women? Yeah. Okay, I'd like to say one thing. This is uh, uh, Shiva Chachi's Water Diviner. Uh, I have collected some very, very large works, which, which are, have been a great effort in storage and, and in putting up the shows and then removing the shows. Uh, so that has been quite an experience, but I haven't been, I haven't been daunted by that. I mean, I feel if it's a great work, we must get it, and then we'll see how to deal with it. So there have been a number of such works. This, of course, is one, and then there's Subodh's line of control, which everybody's seen. And there's the Lourdes, uh, was it Vini? Vini, Vici, Vici, yeah. The, the Vini, Vini, Vici, yes, which is also there. And so there are really a number of really these very, very large uh, works that are part of the collection. Um, any more of the women artists? Okay. Yeah, this yeah. is also Sheba's. Sheba's work, Nilkant. Before that was Neha Choksi, Sonia Kurana, Shazia Sikandar. This is Shazia Sikandar, it's called Parallax. Yeah. It's, a, it's a huge video installation. And uh, yeah. Arpita. this is Arpita, we had a retrospective. Yes. Okay. So uh, this is this is the Kerala artist. I I um, Mamta, you asked about you know how um, acquisition and collection happens because the collection has really grown in the uh, last ten years, and we are almost close to eight thousand works in the collection, eight thousand plus works in the collection. And uh, Kiran is right, she was, of course, concentrated and focused on the progressives, but she was still collecting uh, contemporary works. And I think the approach is always um, very interesting. It can't just be that you would collect every artist in depth. Breadth is equally important for us. It is also because we, we need a museum where you have historic works, but you also have you know, how modern and contemporary. You want to keep that in going. And uh, sometimes it's region specific. For, interest, uh, for instance, in this case, uh, we got very interested in Krishna Kumar's work. And I traveled, went to his home, met his family. He's gone, isn't it? So really looked at his works, tried to source it and 
many of his artist friends helped us doing that. I think Anita Dube was very yes, Anita Dube was very important for uh, in this. But also coming together of Surendra Nair, Madhusudan, you know, Rims and um, 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 uh, C.K. Rajan, all of them together made really a very interesting exhibition. And then the exhibition sometimes leads to collecting works, you know. So they do, the, the exhibition also becomes a mean to mediate and to collect and to understand that, yes, this, this is a very important uh, movement. This is a very important part of our uh, art history. And that's how this Ponya the Field uh, exhibition happened. Next. Um, while we're looking at the slides, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, are there any works that you almost didn't acquire? One question. A second one is that, do you miss having not acquired any work? Okay, so I have a, I have a, a story that I must tell you. Um, I'm, I'm quite a, a, a aggressive bidder, but sometimes it happens that um, for some reason you don't acquire a work. Uh, there was one work uh, which was being auctioned at Christie's and Hugo was the auctioneer. And at a very high level, he took a bid, I think, of $20,000. The bids had gone up to a lot more of $5,000, some really absurd figure. And I was so irritated that I put down the phone. I just hung up and I said, no, I'm not going to bid on these terms. <laughs> and I lost it. It was a beautiful Taya work. I have great regrets that I didn't get it. But it was okay. Sometimes you, you know, you just take it. Then there was a Hussein work that uh, I was bidding on and I didn't get it. The person who bought it was Neeram Modi. And uh, imagine many, many, many years later, it came up an auction in the Neeram Modi sale and I bought the Hussain work. So it was meant to come to me and it has come to me. So there are these things that happen. You lose work, and you know you can't get everything. It, you know it's it's uh, it's not uh, probably not right to do that to bid on everything to the hill. You have to, but uh, I really don't have regrets because I built a pretty important collection, and in that collection there'll always be some works that you won't get, and. As, as long as the collection is something that you have enjoyed building and you enjoy seeing the works um, and living with them, I think that's, that's enough. Always a few things that you won't get, but then as long as you try and you get the bulk of what you want, it's important. I remember uh, Jeram was not planned, Jeram Patel. Uh, Kiran had seen his blowtorch works and responded to them, but really they, uh, one had not thought that the artist would be the one who would say that I'm going to give all my works to the museum and no one else. He shooed away everybody out the, the door who went to his house. And somehow I think this thing that this work needs to be in this museum had got into him. And uh, then I was sad that he could not live to see his retrospective but uh, 234 works of an artist, you know, came into uh, the collection and uh, we just marveled when we saw the entire body and corpus of work, you know, because Jairam was an extremely important artist, just a, just a reclusive and a difficult man. But otherwise, you know, he was, uh, he was brilliant in what he did. So here is that opening and I'm just uh, sharing this image with you. Yeah, I remember the number of times I met Jeram Bhai in Baroda and uh, yeah. he would take out pay works, paperwork from behind, from underneath his mattress. Yes. And he saw me his blowtorch, but yeah. somehow I never got around to acquiring any of the blowtorch works. Imagine getting works even of the 1950s and 60s that he had kept with him, you know, the drawings that he showed. Next, please. The other... Uh, 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 not a works that I didn't really collect uh, for a long time was photographs. And that is something that came in later into the collection and to my mind. 
since then I have built quite an important photography collection. And now I'm looking at this Lionel Went photograph, and I just feel that the power of photo photography is so charismatic that um, it, it is really a real form of art, really a strong form of art. So photography is something that the museum has built quite a large collection and we're continuing to build. But while you're not collecting, you still support it, Dayanita Singh. I think she has had three exhibitions. True, true. Uh, I'm saying it happened later. Yeah, of course, later. And then Madan Mahata, yes. Yes. And the really moderns. So I think, Mamta, it was important for us to think that the museum would not really be just about paintings and sculptures. Contemporary art is so dynamic, so vibrant, so much happens. Artists are using different means and different formats. And uh, also the, there is a need to integrate artistic practices, you know. So this show for me was very, very important because I was just thinking that every time we think about uh, modern art history of India, we only talk so much about modern painting and the revolution you know, that came into modern painting in the post-independence decades, or then sculpture, but we really don't talk about architecture, which, which was extremely important because it was coinciding completely with, you know, Nehru's uh, nation building project and, you know, cities coming up, new kinds of public spaces being designed, public buildings being designed, national buildings being designed, designed museums being designed. And uh, so, this was really very interesting and Ram Rahman was really um, uh, very helpful and co-curator to this section of it where, where you enter the Delhi uh, modern and talk about modern India uh, entering into architecture first, you know, and looking at works and documents and photographs of the time where uh, when India was changing its face, you know, when India was really uh, celebrating his independence through the through, through the coming of new architecture and uh, new urban spaces. Um, yeah, so that also, that, is that, also, that is something also that the museum has collected, yeah. you know, which is uh, photographs, uh, art, architecture models, architecture drawings. You know, um, it, it, this uh, yeah, I, I really like this kind of interfacing with different different mediums and with different, uh, different kinds of genre disciplines. And so there's a very interesting blueprint that's emerged from what we've seen of the KNMA collection. Um, yeah. uh, do you also, does KNMA also plan to collect artworks by established international artists? I mean, there must be some already. <laughs> but the focus is on, more on regional artworks now. Um. I have collected some, some international artists, but that's not a focus. It's not a focus because uh, you need to collect international artists in depth, then you have to build around, uh, and that's to be a core collection. I haven't focused there. <coughs> the artists that I have collected um, are Olafa, um, William Tentridge, uh, We know who else have we collected? Well, if you call a talk of Anish as an international artist, yes, Anish. Yes. But I think I think of Anish more as part of our diaspora. So I don't uh, really view him so much as an And then Hoshari. Mm -hmm. She is. Shazia Hoshari, yes. Yeah. And of course, Shazia is uh, not really. I, I don't know if she's international or not, but. Mm. Yeah, but they they all have roots somewhere here. But Olafur is one artist who I am very very uh, keen on. Oh yes, I have collected a major work by Ai Weiwei. Ai Weiwei, I was thinking about. Yes, it. yes, yeah, yes. Remember. So yeah, I've collected a major work of Ai Weiwei. So that yeah, so so you know these are just touching on some of and the Clemente? artists. Even Clemente, I think, isn't it? And Clemente, yes. 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 And I would like to uh, get Bim a work Bim of Gromley's. Gromley has promised, yeah. promised that he will do a work for us. I mean, and he's promised that he will have a show of his at the inauguration of the museum. So that should be nice. 
So yeah. that's wonderful, uh, Kiran and Rubina, to hear about the collection. Um, any more images here, Rubina, that we want to see? Yeah, we'll need, need to run through. Yeah, yeah I just uh, wanted to quickly uh, show some images because I think time is a constraint. So I'm just going to run past. I think uh, there are uh, the exciting part of uh, building a collection. Can you stop here? Uh, building a collection is also um, when you when you are in a museum space like we are in Saket, you know, it's quite a different experience. We work with certain challenges and constraints, like all of I think all curators do, and uh, it's uh, never an ideal setting that in that sense. And uh, here is Nikhil Chopra, and he did a performance right in a in, a, in, in a, a mall in a shop to adjacent to uh, KNMS building, you know, uh, KNMS space. And he was there for two nights, and it was very interesting because he intrigued so many people in the mall. Some of them did not know what was happening. He was dressed in a particular way. He lived there. There was a bed there, and he was painting on the walls of the shop. You know, and uh, so these kinds of uh, also sensitization and really opening out uh, to the public, you know, in terms of uh, what is happening in contemporary art uh, became quite exciting. I, I know that in both cases, Kiran had to really stretch her neck and go to DLF people. For instance, when we were installing Subod, you know, if you go back to the slide where the installation goes on, you know, engineers come from special special engineers fly down from london because we need engineering feats and skills to really put up something like this which is 20 ton and really heavy and it was 10 to 12 days of installation and then the the column in the center had to be grouted and dug into the parking downstairs for which kiran had to take special permissions but i think it is interesting to see even though it's claustrophobic in that space because it's huge it was important to bring that. And I must tell you, most selfies were taken in front of this work, which was there for four years, at least, where people would just come into this uh, empty mall to just look at this work, stand underneath and just take pictures of. Uh, so something like this really also piques curiosity and intrigue for people otherwise who don't enter museum spaces, sometimes intimidated by by it, sometimes they just don't cross the threshold. And I think the attempt has been also to build audiences around. Otherwise, what is the point of having a museum if we can't build audiences? And the audiences are not a monolith or homogeneous lot. They have to be from different age groups. They come from different backgrounds. They must come from different stratas. They must come from anywhere because it is about building a, a museum has to be for all. So the attempts were to really break these boundaries where people think that art is only something that is done with painting or, you know, or through a, a, you know, a hammer on the marble stone. It is much more than that. And so these kinds of uh, experiments really were done at, uh, through the years at KNMA. Next, please. Similarly, working with Shakuntla Kulkarni, again, her story about working with uh, craftsmen, you know, creating these, uh, um, um, these dresses, which were wearable, but made of cane. We have only heard about cane furniture. We haven't heard about cane, cane as uh, a costume. And so this kind of, uh, and I, I really loved what we did in this show. It's one of my uh, shows that I still remember. Uh, she wore this in front of the audience, each part of it. You know, there were people who helped her, her own people who helped her wear it. And she walked and performed with it, okay? So it's an armor, it's a shelter, and yet it's something that suffocates women. Next. Just running through some images, next please. Okay, that's Bharti's elephant. <laughs> yes. Very poignant work. Um, <clears throat> so should we now uh, talk about other things and get back to shows, uh, Rubina? Yes, so this so. is, I will just run through some <coughs> Excuse me, shows quickly. This is Nasreen Mohammadi's retrospective at the museum at KNM in 2014. <clears throat> and it was a very serene and silent exhibition. And I remember Kiran saying, expressing concerns. It was one of the first show on Indian abstraction. And uh, also her work is minimal, very small, very quiet, 
you know, and the thought that how will people respond to it because it's not so easily, it does not really easily lend itself to a revelation or uh, engagement, you know, you have to really spend time with it. But uh, at us, I mean, we are surprised that it was really very well received. And there were people who came and spent hours there in a studio which was created, which was also one way of planning the journey to enter into her life and her practice in one sense. And uh, then the, the, music, uh, the show traveled to Reina Sofia in Madrid and uh, there it took on a new dimension. I feel every time that I've seen Nasreen uh, uh, be put up, whether at Rena Sofia or at the Met Breuer, uh, it really, it, it changed, it changed. The whole experience changed. You know? The way the spaces received the work, the way the works liberated themselves in these spaces, you know, really it was so uh, soul uplifting completely, you know, in terms of uh, uh, bringing a practice out to, into the public domain. I think uh, very few people really knew the real Nasreen and I think that came through in through this exercise, you know, where I was very cautious, very concerned as a curator that the artist is not there. And how do I really bring her alive in these spaces? You know, how can I create her presence? Because I had felt it as a student, as being a close friend, a confidant. I wanted to create that and uh, uh, go with her uh, sensitivity, so to say. So that is. Rubina, that you were a student in Baroda, and then what you did with her works was absolutely incredible. Yeah, it, um, it still gives me goosebumps. Yes, and I'm still I'm still writing on her. <laughs> Kiran would say your book will never. This get book is over. never going to get published. It'll never <laughs> get over. She says you'll keep writing. But there was another exhibition. Is it what you think? And I am showing Vivan Sundaram's memorial, which was the centerpiece in one sense of this. Ex very powerful exhibition, I think, which also spoke about the social political situation, your question about polarization in the society. You know, how do we really, uh, how do we really um, use the soft power of art? How do we really use art to really touch people's hearts, you know, to tell them that what is, I mean, the whole violence, uh, the, the kind of violence that happens, the kind of, uh, inequality, injustice, deaths, you know, killings, everything, you know, there's so much going wrong. And uh, this show really addressed those issues, you know. It was a very uh, strong show, uh, so, uh, which was a very socially, politically engaged show. Um, it had works by Amar Kanwar, it had works by uh, Nalini Malani, it had works by uh, Rumana Hussain, by Navjot Altaf, many, many more people, and I think, uh, I, it is a very, it's a show very close to my heart. So this is the uh, Vivan Sundaram's uh, memorial. We have seen such uh, polarization in society in the last eight years, uh, politically, socially, and, and ideologically as well. Yeah. Uh, so um, how do you envision the role of a museum in this polarized uh, situation? <clears throat> when would you um, like um, You know, I think, when we talk about what's happened in, well, eight years is a long period, um, <laughs> but it has accentuated in the last four or five, four, four or five years. And uh, it is a very worrying, socially it is it's really a very, very uh, worrying aspect of Indian society the kind of polarization that we are seeing. <clears throat> and I think museums can have a very <clears throat> calming and um, an influence of reproachment, which, which uh, art can bring into this vastly polarized uh, situation that we are facing. And for that, we need to be able to get the voices uh, to come in and to start changing the way they're looking at things. I, I mean, sometimes I don't know how to even think of India in the way it is today. It is, it is really such a frightening aspect of, of our society. So, and then to add to that, we've had this almost a year and a half, or more than a year and a half of uh, the pandemic, which has done 
such grievous harm to all of us. You know, our psyches, see, uh, of course, uh, all of us have lost people. I mean, Ravina lost her mother. Um, and we've all seen terrible, terrible things mm -hmm. happening. And, and with that, museums have also had to, will have to change from being just a, a place that people can visit. I think the other aspect of uh, the museum where you do things online, where you engage people, where you, you know, people are lost and they, they find a sucker by going to a, a space where they can see things. Even if they haven't seen the particular space, they're still able to engage. So I think museums are going to have this sort of dual um, focus where I think the virtual museum is going to become very, very important as we go along. So even while we are building the museum, I think we have to have a focus on the virtual museum as being a part of our lives. Yeah, but it's really great that uh, you and Rubina um, share views on addressing polarized situations in the country. And it's like, it's a free zone. The museum is a free zone for creative expression. So that's, that's wonderful. I think uh, I find works of art least pedantic. I feel that they have a deep impact. You know, they may not immediately uh, convert you in some way or the, some way, but they, they leave an impact. They, they, they nourish your soul. You, I you think they harmonize, harmonize the polarization to some extent. Yeah. You, um, true. Um, also it's admirable that the exhibitions at KNMA have focused beyond the blue chip artists and included young artists as well. Um, Rubina, how do you assess the impact of KNMA on art audiences? And the larger art scenario in India? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. And I don't have a uh, firm, definite answer. But I think that art has a role to play. Museums have a role to play. And um, um, it's important to uh, think about that. I love the way, um, I love when I get responses, criticism, you know, that comes to us. We learn through criticism, we learn through appreciation, we learn what works, doesn't work. All that is part of the learning process. And as I said earlier, that you don't have a ready-made audience when you talk about contemporary art, you know? It's different when you're looking at <clears throat> classical art or uh, um, uh, comparing figures of, uh, you know, people who visit national museums or people who visit contemporary art museums. I think the disconnect is there between people and contemporary art. Since, since colonization and since uh, you know, we became independent, it's been difficult really to uh, get people into museums. You know? But uh, certainly it's important to do that. I, uh, sorry, sorry. I think that, um, I think that, um, uh, something that we have been working on is also audience building and audience engagement. And uh, that uh, for the first two years was very difficult. I can tell you many, many stories of uh, how it was really difficult even to get school children to the museum because they have breathless timetables in their schools. You really can't tell people that please walk, walk-ins, you want to lead walk-ins into the museum. But gradually it has worked and it has started becoming a place where people come with uh, to relax, to learn, to enjoy, to engage, you know. And uh, that I see as something that uh, needs to strengthen and be uh, substantiated and consolidated, you know. After all, a museum cannot run on only tourist visitors. It needs sustained audience. It yes. needs people who will come again and again, you know wanting to again engage with the work, see something new, see what is happening, attend a program, listen to a concert, you know. So it has these multiple, it has various roles to play. And one of this is this, it's a space of socialization in that sense that people come together, build a community, learn, sensitize themselves. It's very elevating, it's uplifting. And I think, I can't imagine, but it's difficult to imagine to have, uh, to live life without, uh, 
without the uh, juice of art, you know, this whole thing about listening to music to unwind or listening to some poetry, you know, which touches your soul. And uh, that's the humanizing aspect of this whole um, endeavor. We all need rasa, creative rasa. In yes, our we all need it, yes. Uh, so as a gallerist, I find uh, that galleries often serve as a barometer for mm -hmm. public uh, taste in art. But however, the diverse collection and curatorial capacity of uh, museums play a far greater role mm -hmm. in influencing the public at large, like you just uh, mentioned. Um, so Kiran, what are your views on KMMA's influence on the art market and collecting patterns for contemporary art? We do see an impact um, of KNMA on collecting patterns, but I was wondering if you can get Kiran's views. Well, uh, let me say one thing that during the pandemic, um, two things that have really have been a surprise. One is the share market, <laughs> and the other is the art market, and the other is the art market. Uh, art prices have more or less sustained. Maybe a, a contemporary hasn't sustained as much as, as progressives and the modern, but still good work is attracting good price. So the value for art is still there. And, and that is a good, good thing to have happened because it, it, it would be sad that suddenly we saw so see all art values falling and people starting divesting. So that hasn't happened. And uh, what was your specific question? Um, the um, KMMA's influence on the art market and also KMMA's influence on the collecting patterns for contemporary art. Okay, I don't know what really, how I can really define our uh, influence on the art market, so to speak. I mean, uh, considering a lot of our collection is based on um, more on, on the moderns and progressives and Ravi Varma. I don't know how much we would influence the layperson because uh, the price factor would be very important. But as far as contemporary is concerned, I'm very open to looking at contemporary. I think that uh, there are new um, roles for contemporary to, to play. And we are finding, at least I've seen that all these sort of um, group shows, Delhi art shows, which have been happening at various places during the lockdown, have had a lot of younger artists and the works at, at reasonable prices and the shows have been very successful. So there are younger collectors buying work and trying to get, you know, maybe they have cash disposable because your other income, your other spending is reduced. And they want to do something to, to elevate their homes. So I do find contemporary is going up and people are, are getting contemporary art into their homes. Yes, that's great. I uh, can only add to this from my, not from the market or from, uh, I think the art ecosystem is very interesting to look at, you know. There is a role for everyone to play, whether it is the collector, whether it's the museum, whether it's gallerist, whether artists, you know. and. Uh, that is something uh, interesting to gauge. I also feel some, I sometimes am bombarded by emails which are all about Indian abstraction artists, you know, young, <laughs> emerging, you know, because they realize that I've curated shows at the museum. The museum has collected a lot of artists who, uh, who address abstra abstraction in their work, you know, whether it be Nasreen or Himmat or, uh, uh, or uh, Ganesh Aloy or whoever. So the, I think that sometimes does happen that uh, because certain works really um, um, become relevant or get, gain significance, you know, being seen in a retrospective or being seen in the way that they have uh, uh, communicated through the exhibition. So that, that happens, but nevertheless, it's so interesting to see how this, you know, how patterns keep emerging. Yeah, yes. they will and they, they will keep changing the, yes. uh, the impact that uh, the museum has. Um, you've spoken about uh, Nasreen's uh, retrospective. Uh, Rubina, would, uh, would you like to share um, images and talk about some of the other iconic shows 
Yes, next uh, please, uh, we'll quickly go through them. Yes, uh, could you there are too many, so I will just, uh, I think, uh, yeah, this was in continuation of, is it what you think? This is Navjot Altaf's uh, work, very powerful work, Mumbai uh, after the riots. Uh, next, the Rimzan. Next, that is Himmat's retrospective. Um, so I'd like to um, add, yeah, yes. so you yeah. So, I'll come to that next. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this um, large monumental work of Himmat uh, that we see on the left. So it's a it's coincidental that um, mm. we curated um, Himmat's um, solo show, show of his terracotta works at Anantat many years ago. I don't remember when. Yes. And uh, that was the first time I think this work was displayed. And I'm so thrilled that this work has found its way into the KNMA's prestigious collection. Yes, and I must just add that sometimes uh, the behind the scenes are very interesting stories. For instance, when I was curating the show at KNMA, Himmat was not keeping well. So he said, I'm not going to come or interfere. You continue and do it. I'll come one day before the exhibition opens. And he came one day before the exhibition opens. It was evening. He walked in. He saw that pedestals were all kept in places. We were opening up terracotta uh, heads and putting them, his terracotta works. And he said, listen, they've gone dry. They need a bath. And I literally fainted. And I said, no, Himad Bhai, I'm not going to even touch them. You know, uh, it's your work. But yes, now, I mean, I have to be answerable to Kiran. And if something goes wrong at the last moment and we don't have a show, he says, no, 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 get a bathtub arranged. And literally at 10, we ran here and there and got a plastic tub. And he filled it with water and he picked up each one of these uh, sculptures and he put them, drowned them in the water and gave them a bath. And then he had kept newspapers ready everywhere and uh, he just put them out. And I said, I was just looking at him and he was so excited. He was just ready, running around, you know, and ye le kya, wo le kya rakho. And I cannot tell you, Mamta, but that night in the museum, I'll never forget. It had such an aroma of the earth, you know, as if it has rained and the earth has just received the rain and you are just, you know, you're just smelling the fragrance of uh, fresh earth. And I realized there's so much to learn. Suppose Himat had never told me the story. I would never know that this is also part of, you know, uh, art keeping in one sense. How would you take care of terracotta sculptures, which we have a great collection of? I guess, Jaan Agai, like. Bilkul, Jaan Agai. And I was, I said, nahi, Himat bhai, toot jayin. He says, trust me, mene baut baar kiya hai, tum bhi si klo. But, so there are such things. And one night before the exhibition was opening, it was quite a story, quite an amazing experience. Next, please. Next one. And I must tell you one more quickly. So this is Paris Autumn. Um, film or a video by uh, Pushpamala. And Pushpamala told me the story that she was in Paris in this little house where she rented and was staying. And it was a spooky place. Okay. And she apparently felt that there was a ghost in the house. Okay. And that's the ghost <laughs> on the left side. But what was very interesting was when we were installing this exhibition, uh, which it was part of uh, Stretch Terrains, it was the rear gallery, the rear room. And we had a technical team and we were, somehow the video was given, you know, there were technical glitches happening. The video wasn't working. It was really 1 a.m. or something when suddenly it started playing. And the video is so powerful. It has such a spooky music. And at 1 a.m. when you're alone with just a small team, where the entire museum is dark, you're just in that space, you know, putting up works, it was, it really, it was so eerie. I can't tell you that experience. And I was, I later shared with uh, Pushpa, but at that moment I said, and every day at night, these technicians for the, la for the next six, seven days played, kept it on. And the spooky music would be on and we would be working. And one of my colleagues said, you know, you know this space where we are was actually a graveyard, a kabristan. <laughs> and such stories came out. This, even the security guard would say, ma'am, don't go there alone. 
So we would go there in a, you know, like a small group to sit and work. And so such experiences while putting up works, you know, stories that people don't come to know, but there are some very interesting moments and really some. Uh, um, to hear uh, behind the scenes story and, and that yes. was such a spooky experience. <laughs> Next, please. Yeah, this is uh, Museum Bhavan by Dayanita saying this was a very interesting exhibition. I'm just showing some vignettes uh, as to how it was displayed. What I found very interesting that she kept so many empty frames, which perhaps don't get cut off, but it was something, it was. Uh, it was what the artist curator believed in, that she would come and curate it every day or every five days and keep changing frames because she believes in having uh, spaces to actually store the work itself uh, right there. So they are incorporated within the structure that she created. Next, please. This is what Akanksha curated, Hangar for the Passerby. It was a very interesting exhibition. In fact, it completely changed the idea of an exhibition space. Okay, it became almost a laboratory, a carpentry workshop. It could, it just took on many, many other forms uh, to really question uh, what a museum space can be like. Next. Another one, Anpu Arki. This was another one that she- A young artist. Yes, and quite a interesting show. Next, please. This is Shahzad Dawood, and this was the first time we did a virtual, uh, a virtual work we showed. The work uh, is called Kalimpong. Yeah, the Kalimpong, the treasure at Kalimpong. You have to actually wear those virtual glasses, and then you enter into this uh, space. Very exciting. Children used to queue up. They just, I felt a. Uh, I, I felt dizzy doing this. I felt disoriented, but you know, it just tells you what younger generations want and like, you know, how much they enjoyed the work. Next, please. This is the work that uh, Kiran was referring to. It was part of a show called Constructs Constructions. Next, please. Natraj Sharma, again, the city that keeps growing. This is the Venice Biennale Indian Pavilion. And I have just two images right now. This is Atul Dodia's Broken Branches. This is Rubana Hussain. It was called Our Time for a Future Sharing. This is the exhibition that just got over. Zarina, A Life in Nine Lines. This was actually, this, uh, ex uh, um, it had three exhibitions and an exhibition by Akanksha. It had four exhibitions. I'm just showing you Zarina's slide because every time that we put up uh, an exhibition, I think it's very interesting how we transform the space. So here you see the arches, which were arches that resemble Zarina's ancestral home. So I put in these arches to enter into that kind of a home space because her whole uh, preoccupation throughout her, you know, throughout, throughout her practice was about home and the loss of a home. Next, this is putting up Prabhavati's work, Prabhavati Mepia's work. She was also part of uh, one of the exhibitions. Next, and this is Sumakshi Singh. It's beautiful. Yes. This part of an exhibition called Line, Beats and Shadows, which was also um, shown simultaneously with Zarina's uh, exhibition. So I've just given some glimpses. It also is a way to show that uh, the collection um, has uh, ephemeral work as well. It has works which are fragile. It has works, as Kiran said, you know, um, very um, challenging to really uh, display and store as well or conserve as well. Okay, so um, they have uh, they require that kind of attention. They require that kind of a diagnostic checkup from time to time, you know, so there are many things. I think it's uh, collection building is also about how you will be uh, looking and taking care of the works, which is a very important part of uh, museum building. You know, when you build a museum, you also want to really see that the life expectancy of a work can be retained and it lives beyond all of us. You know, it continues to live for future generations. And uh, that is something that, uh, 
Uh, Kiran and I talk a lot with the team. We have a very good team, small team, which is now expanding. But uh, I think it's not possible to do this work without a, a great team, a great team spirit with all other people who come in your life to help you. I mean, and also to think that we would, we do not want to remain just one museum, okay? India needs many more museum and the museum culture, as you're saying, is, is changing. There is a rise of museums. There are new museums emerging. And that is a very, that's very good to know because I think there, there is that ethos needed. You know, there is that kind of uh, collaboration, partnership and working across, you know, and uh, uh, sharing with each other. I think not working just in isolation, but really working to build that kind of ecosystem, very important. So I'm really glad that uh, new museums are coming up. Mm -hmm. And in one sense, what Kiran has done is she has pioneered a, a uh, model for a private museum in yeah. India and uh, also sustained it, mm -hmm. which is also very important. There have been experiments, there have been people who have tried, but you know, to sustain, that's so important, sustainability. Yes, how you sustain it is very important to run it through 11 years and keep, keep uh, looking at how to make the program more rigorous, how to reach out more, how to really have more and more people come in you know, and uh, keep working every single day. The museum would have to have an agenda every single day because the role and responsibility of a museum is such. This collection is also a growing collection. Kiran is still acquiring and it is growing. So it really becomes very interesting to see where this will now be in the next 10 years. Yeah. So now, Mamta, Mamta yes. I want to uh, say a few words on the upcoming museum. So in fact, everyone's waiting for this. I'm sure. I'm yeah, sure. so I think I, think, uh, I was ready to no. lead into this. It's taken us many years. I've been looking for space. And finally, we have... Um, Settle the space. It is on NH8, um, just ahead of the Shimurti um, in Delhi. Close to the it's airport. A, it's a seven and a half acre space. And um, we had an architectural contest where we, we, had, uh, we had a consultant from London who held it. And uh, uh, we had a very eminent jury. We had Chris Durkin, we had Glenn Lowry. Of course, there was us. And unanimously, uh, Sir David Adria was selected. So uh, uh, David has become a very good friend, uh, but he's also the, he's also in this last two years got great fame and he just won this medal in London and Anyway, so he's building the museum, and but it's not just the KNMA. It is KNMA and KNCC. So it has the Kirnada Museum of Art along with the Kirnada Cultural Center. Uh -huh. So our uh, feeling was to get engagement of people, you should promote art in any which way. Mm -hmm. So we thought if we can promote music and dance and theater, Etc. in the space, mm -hmm. then one will feed off the other. You know, people come to the museum will probably visit the other spaces, and people come to the other spaces would visit the museum. And so it would be an ongoing um, thing mm -hmm. and the footfalls would increase, which is what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And also we have restaurants and cafes and we have a library. And um, the aim was to build a museum, which is like, uh, in a sense, vision was like the Guggenheim in Bilbao. Build something and they will come to see it. The world will come to see it. If you build an architectural marvel with wonderful art and, and, and other things happening. We have, a, we have a, um, HCL has a concert series. So we would promote the concert series through there. And aim is on the day we open, we must have 30,000 people 
lining up outside to come come and enter. And that is what we'd like to happen. Of course, these are uh, these are great wishes and wishes if wishes or horses, we know what would happen. But we can all dream. And there is this dream that we will build something really meaningful. And after we build it, we will get the response of people not only in Delhi, but people in India and people from abroad who will come and visit India. And Indian art will develop a far more important standing mm -hmm. than it has today. You know, uh, 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 Indian art is, it has, well, look, look at the rich heritage we have and look at uh, the kind of accolades we get in comparison to China. I mean, China is sort of way above and there's really no reason we should be getting that kind of, those kind of accolades as well. So mm -hmm. hopefully all that will happen. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be, it's, go it's going to be a horizontal building because it's uh, it's in the airport zone. So you can't build, build beyond 23 meters in height. So it has to be horizontal. But uh, I wish I could show you the plans. Rolling building. <laughs> <laughs> Rubina, maybe you can say something about the museum building. No, I'm, I'm just saying that, um, yeah, it's a great vision because it really is, is wholesome, I would say, in that sense, that it's also, again, a very pioneering thing that you have uh, brought in art and culture together. You have the museum, you also have a cultural center, you have two or three auditoriums, you have music concerts, you have performances, you have poetry reading, you have uh, permanent galleries now, you have yet to show your permanent collection which was not possible in Sakhet. So a lot of things will change and it will be very interesting then to see how the museum has temporary exhibition spaces, it has permanent galleries, it could have a Krishna Reddy uh, studio of New York really uh, put, put in there for people to visit, uh, many such things, special uh, kinds of exhibitions. It's open to uh, other collectors and their uh, collection so it's really, I think it's a, it's a grand vision in that sense. And in all that, I think what we are not, we are, we are really, really uh, thinking about all the time is to have this reach out to people. How do we get people? How do we really uh, make them, uh, you know, enjoy and, and own it? How will they own it? How will they claim it that it's their own? And I think for that, uh, the 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 way one functions the the way one programs will be very important you know it has to cater to uh, all kinds of audiences all varied diverse audiences and uh, that perhaps is the uh, very big goal and mission of the museum so that's hopefully... wonderful that it's going to um, have uh, various other disciplines as well um, and uh, every this is a lot of hope for art lovers um, to look forward to this uh, new museum building and yeah. like the Guggenheim uh, has changed, uh, transformed the art landscape in Bilbao, like the Louvre has changed it in Abu Dhabi, I'm sure, and I'm sure we're all sure that this too will completely transform the cultural landscape in Delhi. Yeah. So it's given us a lot of uh, excitement and looking forward to this it's about giving it to the city yes the city, it is important and to the world yes so that's wonderful so and i also want to say that i have also i am also collecting miniature so that not so many people know about mm -hmm. but yes i have and i have collected uh, it's quite in depth now so sooner or later we will show uh a miniature collection. That's, that's pretty good. That's great. Okay. To um, so, uh, Kiran, you've spoken about your goals and dreams about the museum, the, through the new museum building, and uh, where your, uh, um, it's like, uh, uh, like the Indian word rasa, where all disciplines um, mm -hmm. come together, and all disciplines of art. Um, Rubina, any, the last question, any question, any uh, upcoming projects that you're excited about? That is the question I'm not prepared for, literally. I would say that uh, what the pandemic has done is it's put everything under construction, you know, and change. Uh, there were things that one was wanting to do, which one was not able to do. 
but nevertheless it was it's been a very intense period it has been uh, uh, really it has opened up a space for self reflection it has opened up a space to think about uh, uh, human relationships about connectedness and about caring which is all important and very uh, necessary for a music to think so right now the focus has been so much about online connecting and learning and sharpening one's uh, digital skills so to say so one remains connected and not so isolated from uh, because of the museum being closed of course it's going to now open but it has been so so i i think that um, there is work going on on various things a huge photography uh, exhibition um it's still under wraps i'm still uh, we're still thinking how we'll go about with that because kiran as she said now she has a substantial uh, collection of uh, photographs across time and uh, that would be something that one would be interested to do i would be interested to look at because it's all new new collection okay of the of recent years so that's one area definitely of uh, and uh, i've gone very i've got very interested uh, recently uh, to landscapes and uh, i don't know whether it is something to do with hope or uh, not being there deprived of being in gardens and parks and uh, closer to nature so that uh, that kind of a landscape of hope is in my mind i don't know what i will do with it but it's a thought that is lingering so let's see what yeah. comes out of it yes i'm exciting so thank you for a very wonderful uh, conversation uh, yes just to add that we are doing a very um, huge uh, quite a, a significant exhibition in moscow next year oh. we have been working in it or working on it for the last 3 years uh, it has been postponed for uh, next summer mm -hmm. um, but um, it's going to be um, a huge exhibition on actually showing contemporary art of india in that part of the world we going to have over 100 works being shown yes you have to go to moscow and see that <laughs> you have to all come here okay just before we end i just looked at the question that somebody has posted mm -hmm. uh the person is ganesh shiva swam mm -hmm. he says i'm curious about what mrs nader has done to ensure this phenomenal collection is protected into the distant future mm. and that the core ideology of its private collector is immortalized i'm very touched at the message mm. so i just thought i was going to read it uh, and thank you mr ganesh shivaswami we shall do whatever is necessary i don't know if i need to be immortalized but <laughs> i hope i'm remembered kindly absolutely absolutely thank you kiran thank uh, you very much caring and uh, so i just want to sum up by um, appreciating museum founders and museum leaders so museum founders are one of the most important players in the art scenario they invest their resources their financial support and as we have seen passion to promote art and enable public access Uh, private museum leaders are shaping museums today and for the future the public is exposed to more great art than ever uh, there is the idea of sharing engagement with contemporary art at multiple levels uh, the dialogue between works and the viewer so like kiran once described in an earlier talk she described kenma as a nurturing place museums of today are like safe havens for artistic freedom engagement by people of all backgrounds and they contribute to transforming society uh, there is a relationship between the museum and the arts uh, that of between the museum and society and then uh, the relationship between the arts and society so i'd like to end with a quote by johannes cladders mm -hmm. i have always believed that it is the artist who creates a work but a society that turns it into a work of art so on that we end this wonderful conversation uh, thank you so much kiran for being a part of this conversation your contribution in the art world will leave a valuable and enduring impression amongst both the connoisseurs and the casuals 
and immortalize your contribution for sure. Uh, thank you ever so much, Rubina, on your valuable insights into the workings of KNMA and the artistic direction that um, you provide. They really serve as a great source of inspiration to all. A big, big thank you. Thank you so much, Mamta. Thank you, Mamta, for holding this uh, TAP program. And uh, I think I have really enjoyed it, and I hope other people have too. Thank you. Thank you, Kiran. Thank you. Thank your team also, Mamta. Yes, please thank everybody. And uh, thank you, Rubina, and thank you very yeah. much, Kiran, and thank you, Mamta. Big thank you, Sharan. I didn't see you. I only saw your name. I didn't yeah, for my team also. Big thank you, TAP team, Sharan, Anupa, Shruti, Ayushi, and, Shru and Sudha. And a big, big thanks to all the viewers joining us. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed talking. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you very much. And we'll answer the questions in social media later. Please. Sure. We'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.